morning. It's Thursday today. Thursday today, I'm heading away over to the northeast. I've got a very first service on a DX210. I've got Pilot Accumulator to put on a 140LC5. Just a little problem or a little fault that I noticed with that 140 um, when I was servicing it about a fortnight ago. Just a little job, so um, I sort of saved it till I'm back up in the area. Right, we'll head uh, head east. Well, sort of like we'll head north and then east a bit and then north a bit more and then east a bit more. Cross country anyway, about 100 odd mile and it'll take us a couple of hours. We better crack on. Oh, it's a bit disappointing. Normally it's a bit brighter over on the east coast, but uh, just a bit dull all around. Anyway, um, I found my digger from a road the other side of this field um, and I've sort of done my Google images looking about and this is the way to go to it. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut across this field. I nearly cut across the field next door and I looked at it and thought better not because that looks like it's been drilled. Whereas this field looks like it's a uh, rape stubble field and it's looking like this is the way. Guarantee you we'll meet a tractor at the brow of this hill, look. Here on stubble hitting me. Belly of my van. There it is, look. You what a mess. Stuff everywhere, look. Right, we'll just get let him get this trailer loaded and then uh, We'll fire this, fire this pilot accumulator on it. Um, I'll try and be as quick as I can, so I'm not holding the machine up. Um, so I'll tell you about what this pilot accumulator is. For anybody that doesn't know, pilot accumulator is this, and it sits behind the cab, and basically, I mean, if you're a regular viewer, you've seen me change half a dozen of these now probably and each time I've probably given the same expl explanation but when I was servicing the machine about a week or so, 10 days ago um, I noticed that when I was working the arm I found that when you when you, you, when you change direction of the arm or, or the, the you know, bucket curl function it's very severe and sharp at stopping and changing direction um, and so that is because this accumulator is filled. So what is this accumulator? In here you've got um, you've got like a, a rubber diaphragm with a nitrogen gas on one side of it and that basically acts like a cushion because gases will compress whereas liquids won't um, and that acts uh, that takes the peaks out of the pressure points in the pilot circuit. So when you're casting your arm out and then bringing it back in again um, you're gonna get an inevitable peak in your pressure and the idea of that is it takes the peak off the pressure and makes it a bit more rounded as opposed to pointed um, and it just makes the machine feel a bit more the, the movements are a lot more fluid and smooth as opposed to sharp direction changes um, so what will have happened is that diaphragm will have split and basically filled that with oil um, so that's essentially just a big ball of oil is what I was saying in the video um, so it is just a case of it's that 27 mil spanner and spinning it off putting a new one on it uh, swapping the o-ring over putting a new one on it and that is literally the job done so you can see why I've sort of waited until I've been up in the area before I've been to go and get this job done because it's just a, a five minute just passing job. So here I am. The way to confirm that the pilot accumulator has stopped working, turn the ignition on, don't start the engine, lift the pilot lever, wobble these levers and the arm should set, allow all, all the stored pressure in that accumulator should move all the spools um, until that 
um, stored pressure is relieved, but you can see I'm wobbling the joysticks here and nothing's happening. So these accumulators are always FT, so just gently give them a Give him a tap and hopefully it'll snap. That isn't gonna go today, is it? Oh, I'll uh, try and give that a tap. Do it a good swing like, but I don't know. It's very hard to do this one. Out. Yeah, it's much smoother now. Before, when I changed direction, you'd hear the bucket rattle and it'd give itself a bit of a shake. Like that, you see how I've done it sharply. Much better now. And then if I um, stop the machine, I'm going to turn the ignition on now. Lift this dead man lever up. See how it settles out. Accumulator working. Marvellous, isn't it? That's just one of those things that just quietly stops working and you sort of, as you're working it, you just sort of compensate for it. It's only when someone like me comes along and goes, Phew, that's a bit sharp like, that uh, you realise that there is a problem. Right, what's that done look? The only thing that kind of spoiled it was I normally swap the o-ring but it's split as I was swapping it so it's got a new one on. Nice and easy. Right, we're going to service the digger now. There he goes, I went back to his ditch. Cleaning that out. Right, uh, next job is 30 minutes or so away. I'll go and do that. Now I thought it was a DX210 but I think it's actually a 225 but anyway I was going to say it's the same difference but it isn't but anyway yeah we'll go and do that right we've made it that 225 up there is uh, obviously quarrying stone for this forestry job case shovel there huh case shovel who would have thought it so yeah, um, I've never been here before, uh, I've, I've not, so I've, I've done well to get here without any directions, that uh, Develon, what do they call it, Develon Fleet Management, the app has got me here all by itself, um, just a little bit of nosing on Google Maps, knowing which road to take, and yeah, what a tremendous job. So this is going to be a first service on this 225, uh, which is more than just an engine service, we'll do the hydraulic return filters as well. Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, I apologise about that, I didn't film that service. Um, yeah, I haven't seen him in ages. The last... Oh, three or four times I've serviced his machines, he's got a... Uh, Eight tonner and a well, he had a 225 dash five before he got that one there. And the uh, last few times I've serviced his machines, he's been away on holiday, um, so I've had a right good catch up with him to be fair. Uh, it's been good, but obviously, I've sacrificed a bit of content. Which, to be fair, spinning filters, isn't it? There was nothing of note to show you. Um, did the engine oil, two fuel filters, and a hydraulic return filter, and a pilot filter. So all that's done. No problems with the machine. I just showed him a couple of bits and pieces on the machine. Um, just there's a few differences between that and his Dash 5 that he had. So that's all good. I'm just waiting here just now. There is a forwarder blocking the way. I'm just waiting for that. It's quarter to three now. Let's have a look, see how long it's going to take to get home. Although I've got no phone signal, it might not tell me. I would imagine it would be a two hour drive, look. Yeah, I've got no internet. I think it's two hours anyway. So I'll round the video, no I won't, 
tomorrow it's it's i've got that friday feeling and it's only thursday i'll see you in the morning i've got a, a loading shovel to go to down in lancashire morning i don't feel like i did a very good job of uh capturing much yesterday so i'm going to try harder today and i'm going to go and look at a dl450 you got to start in full it's intermittent that's the plan um although there is talk of the machine moving to site today so i hope i get there before the low loader does right let's go and see it shall we what a spot i've come to here uh, that way down there is oh, it's, we're definitely in yorkshire by the way 100 percent yorkshire this is yorkshire dales um but that direction there is where i've come from right up this fell side Beautiful. That's where I'm going down that side. That must be borderline Lancashire like. But till I see a signpost, I'm in Yorkshire and it's very nice. Fair play, Yorkshire. It's nice round here. So the story is with this shovel is that it um, starts and runs, but it won't move occasionally you have to kind of key off key on key off key on and it'll start uh, and it'll move there's loads of transmission error codes um, but I noticed when I was cranking it over it was a bit lazy to try and start so the first thing I'm gonna do is take the feed off the starter motor here which feeds the emergency steering pump because the emergency steering pump draws quite a lot of current and it, whenever you turn the ignition on the emergency steering pump kicks in um, so we're going to do away with the emergency steering pump because when the transmission controller sees less than 18 volts the transmission controller shuts down um, and then obviously when the machine starts and running then all of a sudden it's got power again so I'm just going to quickly take this lead off the back of this starter motor here and do away with the emergency steering pump briefly just to kind of cancel that out like I say it was a bit slow to turn over and try and fire just thinking as well it's such a clean machine and then I've gone to go and knock the isolator off and some of these contacts aren't looking excellent are they hmm there's a lot of short circuit faults and low battery voltage faults so mm -hmm. so that's the emergency steering pump dissipated dis dis disconnected uh we'll just start it up i want to keep an eye on the voltage battery voltage you can see battery voltage is a bit weak problem though the battery voltage is dropping too low and the transmission controllers switching off and then booting back up again not much to see in transmission data I can have a look at the error codes same short circuit to ground all the clutch packs voltage below normal voltage below normal voltage below normal that's my problem boys and girls that is my problem and i bet you just taking that off and letting it charge now like i can say that that motor just takes so much life out of the out of the batteries in a wagon. It's going, it's going. <laughs> this fella is literally waiting for me to have a look at this and then he's put it on the back of the wagon and they've sold it. So, yeah, there you go. Right, I've had it running 10 minutes now. What I'm going to do is switch it off 
and restart it and uh, hopefully it'll be all right we'll see i do suspect there's a bit of an issue with the batteries they do look particularly old i've noticed as well that everything's reading like 677 hours which tells me that it might have had a epos controller on it which might have failed because it's been jump started the wrong way around it's another suspicion of mine um, but obviously everything's working now but all the faults logged were no older than 677 hours and the machine's done nearly 14,000 very tidy looking machine for 14,000 though to be fair Reast. there we go it's running absolutely perfectly now not a single error code it's now moving backwards and forwards before it wouldn't when those error codes were active also ties in with what they were saying if they get it started and running switch it off and key back on quickly then uh, the machine works perfectly um, and what they're doing is they're not allowing the machine to fully switch off so therefore when they boot back up again it hasn't had time to lose current through the batteries a nice ride out for a nice simple solution what I might do just to kind of feel as though I've done something other than pull the battery lead off the starter motor is just clean those terminals up on the battery just I've seen it and I can't unsee it so I better do something about them but the machine is as you can see lovely I'll tell you what it's a nice machine 14,000 hours Yeah, cool. I'll uh, I'll clean these uh, fittings up then. These battery terminals. Right, that's all the terminals cleaned up. Some battery grease on there as well. Lovely. Uh, I've done the same on this side, and I need to turn the isolator back on. Smashing. Right. See if it'll start again. Ready, go. Yeah, it's that emergency steering pump that's been the biggest killer for it. That's it working grand now. Right, I'll move this out of the way for this trucker and I can pack up and clear off and Oh lovely. Nice one. Right, that's that machine away to its new home in perfect working order. I even said the fuel gauge has started working now. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Nice little result. I honestly thought I would, uh, I thought that was going to be a day's work, that. I thought an old shovel, never seen it before. Uh, I thought I was going to have a real job on my hands, but. Uh, no, what what a nice job to do on a Friday. Okay, I'll uh, I'll head back up to Carlisle now because there's nothing else down this neck of the woods to do that I can think of. No, I'll tell you what, I don't have to need a shave. I'm at that stage now where it's just a bit uncomfortable. It's a weekend job. Right, um, yeah, let's see which way. I'm gonna go back a different way just because there was three options to come down this way and uh, there was only about three minutes between the longest route and the shortest route. So we'll go a different way back. It is 31 minutes past 12, so I thought, I'll have lunch here. It's a shame it's a bit hazy. That's all the moisture from all the rain that we've had over the summer going up into the atmosphere again. And there's probably a bit of that Saharan dust as well, but oh, this is a good job. Remind me of this 
when it's November and it's snowing and I'm, <laughs> I'm having a hard time staying dry and warm. <laughs> These are the good days that you forget. <laughs> hey man, so looking down there, that is, if you've been away down, if you live in the north and you've been away down south, to me, that petrol station there that looks like a spaceship. Where is it there? That, that petrol station there that looks like a spaceship. That is the sign to me that we're nearly home. <laughs> you've been for a road trip down south, wherever you've been, Carmel on holiday, uh, whatever. When you get to that petrol station there, you've an hour and a half and you'll be back home. And that's like the gateway to the north, the real north. <laughs> Anywhere south of there, it's down south if you're from up in up in my neck of the woods. Yeah, marvelous. So I would imagine, yeah, Blackpool will be somewhere over in that direction. There's that power station there in the background. You just make out there's like a grey blob above the petrol station that looks like a, a spaceship. That's that power station. Ah, uh, nice. There'll be Lancaster up that way. Life is good. Friday feeling. Right, I'll tuck into my sandwiches. It'll be nice and refrigerated and cold. There we go. Friday lunchtime is complete. I thought it's left a lunch. Not an awful lot. <laughs> right. I'll head up the road, I get back up to Carlisle 4, 39 minutes past 2, so what's that? An hour and 23 minutes drive. Lovely fellas in there, got the job sorted out. So I'll go back in there on Monday morning, collect my pipes and my diver valve thing Um Yeah, marvellous. All I need to do now is make up a couple of brackets for to hold these diverter valves onto the boom. If you've no idea what I'm on about and you haven't seen the Would It Be Monday's video, so the video from Tuesday, go back two episodes ago, I went up to Dumfries Yard to see a DX27 to have a price, a way up, a price up really, a way up, uh, so I knew how long the pipes I needed to make and stuff. Um, but on Monday, I'll give you the full lowdown, so I'll go and do that job on Monday. Uh, along with, I've got a 140 that's squeaky, and a DX19 that needs its first service. So There you go, I don't normally give it away, what's happening on the next episode, but uh, hopefully, anyway, that's Monday morning. There's time yet for plans to change, we'll see. Well, it's looking good. Nice and clean. It hasn't had a wash really since I put the since I got the new decals put on it. It wasn't that dirty anyway, but the front was absolutely minging with flies. Absolutely minging. Anyway, it looks like I'll round the video up at that for today because admin to do now. Oh I've got that service kit, I'll chuck that off and I don't need that anymore. Not two two five. Oh there's an empty drum look. My system's working. Yeah, I'll just have a square up now and wait for the weekend. Look at that. <laughs> I did that 225 yesterday. So the fella says, can you fetch us some touch-up paint? I didn't know whether he wanted spray paint or brush-on paint, so I took him a tin of each. And he was there chatting to us the whole time and never asked us, oh, did you fetch that paint? So I didn't remember to give him it. What a titty. Right, have a good weekend. See you on Monday.